Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent. Yes, Trophinut is playing Gwent. What? Yeah, I realize it's been a while, but uh, if you've checked out my Trophinut update video, you know why that was. I've been sick for quite a bit, and uh, I also had a lot of work on my, uh, well, my, my full-time job. I was uh, really busy there, and uh, I was also busy testing the mobile version of Gwent, which is also now released. So check that out if you're interested in that. But uh, if you want to know more about the update to the channel, check out that video instead. What I want to do today, it's something I actually described in that video as well, is that I want to start uh, showing you guys how I play more in detail. So I'm going to start recording my ranked matches. As you can see, last season I barely... Played, so I went from uh, 8 back up to 12, rank 12. So today we're going to go at least from 12 to 11 uh, and see if we might even push through to 10. Uh, as a start, I want to show you what my decks are. First up is my High Seas deck. It's a Skellig deck with Second Wind and a bunch of boat and pirate related cards. So uh, you can see the deck composition right here. I won't go into it in detail just yet. This is one of the decks I originally made for Gwent Edge, but since I uh, had to delay a few of those videos, you're gonna see it here first. So it's kind of based on uh, a Wusubi deck, uh, but I put my own spin on it with a few extra boats and pirates, which is gonna be interesting. I'm really curious how this is gonna do, because I barely played with this deck before, uh, but it should do pretty okay. And then my other deck is the Chitin Charge, which is uh, a monster uh, insectoid desk, so uh, the deck. So it's pretty much an update on my dead bugs deck with a lot of the new cards included as well to have maximum flexibility. So you see the uh, the usual suspects as uh, like Glusty Warp and stuff like that, but also the Kikimore Queen, Wygern and Cave Troll are also in this deck. So uh, a really, really cool deck that spawns a lot of tiny little creatures and uh, we're gonna be playing that as well. So. Let's uh, dive in. I'm gonna start with Skellige since I'm uh, most used to that. So here we go, high seas. I don't know if I need to change anything. You know what? Of course, I need to change it to the shipboard. There we go. Uh, and that means it's not an unranked match. It's a classic ranked match. So here we go. So I'm most comfortable with Skellige, which is why I'm gonna go for that. Look at that, the red of its skin. Against a master dude, which is interesting. Uh, what do we want to have as a start? Jetta is always nice. I don't need the Iron Falcon Troubadour just yet. The Armored Drakkar. I could technically use. Although I could pull that with Raiding Fleet as well. So don't no need for that. Surrender is always nice. And maybe get rid of the Boat Builders. There we go. The Wild Boar of the Sea. A uh, good way to start this off is usually getting an Uncreate Longship on the board. And then the turn, so that damages the every unit my opponent plays by one immediately, once it spawns. Okay, Prince Ansays, which is a pretty hefty card to be wasting on that. Yeah, you know what? Give an enemy unit bleeding for four turns and play a random bronze ship from your deck. And it's the one I actually wanted. There we go. Range the Dim and Light Longship, like that, and I can, it's second wind, so I don't need to do anything just yet. I could damage him again, but no need to do that just yet. Damage a unit by eight. Fair enough. Could play Jutta, so I can play her later on without using the deploy ability. Always a nice way to doing that. There we go. And the rest is basically, hmm, should I... I was hoping for, of course, a Drakkar, so I could use a Terracru Plunderer as well. But no need for that, apparently. Defender and Shields. Mind your words, and who you address, hmm. and how you address them. That is a lot of things in one card. So, what I usually want to do with that, then, is just purify that so the defender status is gone, at least. Uh, so, that here we go. Really purify that, and then I could damage it, but no need for that just yet, I think. Um, I could do Stunning Blow. 
uh, in the next turn, which is going to be nice because then I can finish him off with the Demon Light Longship. Didn't even need to purify him then. So there that goes. Then we have Barricade Range that at the end of every ally turn boosts self by one. And exposed, move self to the melee row and then damage the strongest enemy unit by two. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So, stunning blow right here. And he gets smashed in the face and then the Dim and Light Longship can finish him off. There we go. And I think that's gonna be a pass from him. Or not. Okay. Nice mess you've got here. It's an interesting choice. But even if you manage to... So it is Calante's ability, so the pincer maneuver. I would say pass, but then... I want to get rid of the Terra Crew Plunderer, because it's pretty useless at the moment. There we go. End the turn. He's only gaining one point from the Redanian Knight over there at first, so... No need for that, so he's using that, so that's extra 4 points, and then he needs to go to 8 if he wants to do that again. If I expose him, but that's not gonna help. I was thinking maybe with Surrender, putting them all on the same row. Uh, but I need to play another card in between that, so I think I'm just gonna pass. Because that gives me at least Jutta in the graveyard, so we can pull her back. And he's just gonna, yeah, do that. So he's basically going for the revenants, which is good because I'm kind of hoping for that with all the... That would have been nice with Surrender. So now he's probably gonna want to play um, Ceres Mother in the next turn. And that could, Ooh, that's really, really crappy. So I can redraw twice though. Uh, get rid of the Terror Group Blunderer. Ooh, Tempest. Tempest is nice because we're going to have a lot of units on the same row and I can get that extra damage in. So the Iron Falcon Trepador gone and then the Uncrate Greatsword. Okay. But I think Pavetta is... Is that 5 or 6? If it's 5, I can just play Holger Black Hand and force a pass. Or he's going to try and play this out, which is going to be a bigger problem. Opponent is deciding. Yeah, he's going for it. Okay. Pincer maneuver with one card less. I mean, that just means I'm gonna definitely start with Holger Blackhand. Oh, gold. That's not good, is it? Sometimes the price is too damn. That means I need to get some damage in. Purifying is useless now. I don't have any proper cards to replay from my deck. This is getting interesting, isn't it? So definitely Holger Blackhand. Ah, might actually lose his first one. So he's gonna gain charges every time. The charge is gonna keep coming. He probably has, okay, the Redanian Archer. As long as he's barricaded, but, but I can get rid of the barricade rather quickly. And the boots are also not technically a problem, because I can get rid of that as well. Um. Let's play the Uncrate Greatsword over here. Let's see what else gives uh, stats. So I think those guys need to be on the range row, right? So if he has another one, I can just use Surrender to get rid of the armor and that at least gets rid of the charges loop. But I can't forget that this is also not the final round. Oh, and that's a banish. That's a banish. I could now technically use my resurrect, but that would be a bit of a waste. But if I want to make this work, I want to get... Because I still don't have... Yeah, that's my only... You know what? I'm going to do that. So let's second wind... Oh. Oh, wait, what? Second wind is Calaga unit, right? Oh no, it's banished, of course. Um, okay, then I just need to go for the Uncrate Longship. So that's a ship, so that gets boosted. And then we do Surrender on that row and we get six damage. That was really invisible, but there we go. 
Of course, it, would ba it was banished by the Karate Heat Wave. And then Tempest, I suppose. Just to get rid of these. Ah, wow, the damage took a while to, to register there. And I think that's because of the, the new systems. So now I need to count. So Visigota goes down to two. So that's 10 points. I think I got this almost. So if I play Morgvark, uh, do I need to put that on a row? Because I've never really actually played Morgvark. There we go. To your gods. And there we go. And there we go. Just, just barely. Just barely got the turn there. There we go. Now the only thing I need to be careful of is that of course every single one of those uh, normal guys has returned to the deck. Um, armor is going to be useless, right? So Iron Falcon Troubadour and Boat Builders. That might actually be interesting. I think I'm going to get rid of the Wild Boar of the Sea because I won't be able to do any tick damage. And there we have that. Okay. So, Covenant of Steel, Defender. Who's next? There we go. Who's got the courage? If you control a ship, gain zeal. So that's going to be interesting in combination with the Terror of the Seas. It's going to purify my defender status. Spirit, what need ye to flee this world ever free? Um, then we go with the Terror Crew Plunderer. Which could technically just go to another row. Damage my own unit there. And then we're going to get armor every turn because of the Berserk ability. There we go. So it is a bit delayed, the reactions we're getting. So... Ah, this is going to be annoying. So lose all armor and damage units by that amount whenever you play a pirate, gain an armor. And this one gains seal, so it kind of fits together. So let's do that. Could have done that before as well. But then I would risk getting attacked. Probably should have done that first. So that gets more armor. Which is good, because I'm going to suppose he's going to go for Revenants next. Because this one is going to pull all of the copies from the Blue Stripes Commanders, which is going to be 5, I think. And he's not going to get the damage off. Um, so now, I think I have just enough to kill Vernon Roach, but that's not going to be enough. And we get an extra armor there, and an extra armor there, and then we can kill off Roach, but that's definitely not going to be enough, because they have another card. Well played. Job you did there. If I would have had Surrender and the Terror of the Seas left, I would have probably gotten it, but uh, there we go, defeat. Nothing to do about that. GG. And there we go, right into the next one, another Northern Realm Spencer Maneuver uh, deck. Which is fine. I kind of make a, made a few tweaks, as you might see in a second. I kind of went with the... Um, well, Dagur and the Great Swords a bit further. Hmm. Let's do their crew plunderers. That's a bit too much to my taste. Uh, although we could use that on the Drakkar. If we get a Drakkar with Raiding Fleet, which should be possible at this turn. Let's get rid of one of... Yeah, there we go. One of the Uncrate Great Swords. And my opponent goes... First, uh, barricades. Barricades is nothing to be scared of. Um, so we're gonna give that unit bleeding, and then see what else we're gonna get from the. And it's of course the longship, the uncreate longship. But the bleeding is gonna pretty much make that Redanian knight useless. Oh well, yeah, we're gonna do that. Both on ranged, I suppose. So he got damaged because of that, but he kind of wasted his card, I feel like, but uh, what else do we have? Let's put the Greatsword down over, although you know what, let's put the Longship down first, like that. Let's keep that damage ticking down, 
uh, and I could technically go with boat builders after that to give the long ship, the light long ship, a bit of armor, making it basically immune to everything, even its own ability. And there goes the long ship with a, a nice purify bomb. But then we have the Uncreate Great Swords. Let's put that down over here. And end it at that. So unless he wants to... He's either going to try and take that out. Which is great. Because, yeah, there we go. We want to get rid of those cards. There we go. No problem at all. No problem at all. Um, then we get the boat builders on the field. And there we go. And then the long ship can start ticking onto the other units and not losing anything in the process because of the armor. So, a battering ram, which either... It could do 3 damage if it wants to, which means that if I take it out, it even just... Yeah, I can't just use Stunning Blow to just take that out, I think. There we go. Blammo. So no need for that. Now we can continue hitting ourselves. There we go. So only two points behind with equal cards, which is fine. And then that guy can damage as well. So he's going to keep getting uh, keep getting charges otherwise. Um, so let's use a Tire of the Seas. And get that damage on there. And then damage that even further. There we go. Could use Morgvark to take out the knight's uh, total points. Because that's up to 6 points extra, so that's 7 damage. Oh no, he starts at 2, so I can put him to 1. That's 8 damage I can do with one card. The trait is okay. okay, fair enough. The Terek Plunderer can go ahead and do that. And then I can damage the Redanian Knight myself. Forcing him. He's probably going to pass after this. There we go. Because now they're all in the same row. And I kind of have the advantage there. So now I just need to play Morgvark, I think. Because Stan is sadly just not high enough. So let's just play Morgvark. Like this. And there we go. Just enough, as usual. That's the way we want it. Just one point above him. One point above him. Fine enough. And that gives me the first run round now. So I get a bit of an advantage there. Next round. So next round is obviously going to be a pass round. So now, for the last one, I definitely want to have a few cards I'm not getting at the moment. Um, so let's get rid of... Let's get rid of the Terror Crew Plunderer, maybe. Although I don't have any use for the Boat Builders at the moment. Arakas Phantom is pretty nice, especially considering we're going to get a lot of peculiar units down there. I think Purified might be less useful here. Ah, there's Surrender. Okay. Okay, your opponent goes first. Could go with Jutta now. Let's see what he does with his reset. Probably going to be the better option. So he's resetting that back to 5. And now I'm either going to get damaged a lot or not. Oh, for fuck's sake, yeah. That's going to kill it. But that does mean that I can get... It is a play, so that doesn't really help us, to, does it? This play won't... Hmm... What could I do to get better here? Don't think there's much I can do. Because... Probably the Drakkar is the best option here. Um, yeah, because if I play the Drakkar... I can actually get Murdroom on the Drakkar. And that just gets it to 13, which is... Yeah, 
Probably the best I could hope for, but... Well played. Let's swap it up a bit, because it's not going that well. So two losses and one win. Let's go with the uh, the monster deck instead. With the, the, the very fancy uh, card pack, which is also nice. And of course, when playing monsters, we're getting uh, suddenly Squirtel. After three Northern Realm stacks. Because, uh, yeah, Pinsel Maneuver is really popular these days, apparently. But, um... Vran Warrior can go for now. I do have the Andrega Queen, which is nice. So that's going to get us a lot of extra ticks. Uh, Natural Selection can go if I have uh, Manticore Venom and Predatory Dive. Plus, I can play an Organic card from my deck, so I can even get rid of Predatory Dive, which is only useful in certain occasions. There we go. Andrega Larveral is always a good starting point, so... Let's just do that, and then we can start cooking, because the Cookie More Worker is a really good card to start with as well. It's fragile, so if you get 4 damage in your next turn, you're basically done. But on the other hand, if I can keep him alive, I can actually consume him with the Andrega Queen, which gives us a lot of thrones for the remainder of the round. I'm again missing pretty much every card I want to have for my fancy combo. Uh, although I could pull one of them with Whisper's Tribute. Uh, and then with the Dwarven Agitator. Okay. So that means we're going to go to Thrive Round in Round 1. So let's just put the Kiki More Worker on the field. So that's exposed to store itself. So if I take 4 damage on that unit, it's gone. But if it survives for one turn, I have a nice consumed target. Yeah. And it survives. It survives. So Rowdy Dwarves. It's another a freaking a dwarf stack, which is fine by me. I don't really want to get into that. So let's consume the Kiki More Worker now. And that gives us a double, of course, tick to the Andrega Larva. Uh, and that's then let's end the turn, because we're ahead comfortably. And the Queen is gonna keep damaging itself and uh, Making drones, which is really, really handy. And that's, of course, what I was expecting. There we go. They're going to damage themselves, but of course, I have a bit of armor on the field, so that's not really that much of a problem. Um, then, I could probably do wits. I think I'm just going to go for the griffin. So the griffin is going to consume that little drone over there. There we go. And we still have those five extra points from the, the advantage we're getting. And of course, yes, he's generating two damage per turn, but I'm generating one point per turn. The semblance of power don't and there goes another drone, which is fine. As long as the armor isn't touched, I'm actually pretty okay with that. Um, I think Pugo is probably the better option here. So if I accidentally damage something I don't want to damage... Sadly, then, I don't want to damage the Andrega Queen. That's fine, and now I can use those five points over there. And we're pretty much up and top. This next time I'm going to use the Andrega Warrior to get the drone and the griffin, if I can. And that's really soon for an Overgradient Justice. Because that's another double Berserker, which is fine by me. Okay, fair enough. Um, should I? I could also just pass, and although it's four points that he generates every turn, which is not something I want to get involved in right now. So let's just use the Andrega Warrior. Do this. So that's another 12. And I get one extra drone, double Thrive Tick, and end the turn. So that's 17 points ahead. Which is going to be reduced to 13, and that's another point. So, it's going to stay at 14. We're soon by 5, and if it's also gain armor. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to let him keep doing that. So, 4 points means that he needs 7 normal points to actually get uh, above me. Unless I want to actually play my defender already, but I don't think I want to. I'm going to risk... Him not being able... Well, he's going to need to overplay, which I'm fine with. 
that's gonna be... That's not gonna be good. Although it is resilience, of course. But the problem with that is that we're equal now. Ah, yeah, of course, but it triggers again at the end of the turn. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I can get rid of that rather easily if I want to, especially if I now just pull... Um, I don't pull it. Um, like this. Damage all units on a row, which is going to be handy, probably. And get rid of the Ice Giant for now, that I have a bit of... Although I can pull... Lacerate if I want to, yeah. Opponent goes first. Is he gonna pass? No, he's not. Okay. Interesting. Could go with the Ice Giant next. There we go. Because I know that his last card is gonna be... What's his name again? Just play him that I can tell you. There we go, Sheldon Skaggs. So that's... Uh, quite a hefty... A hefty hit there, but 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 um can I overcome that with Glusty Warp? Let's see. I'm gonna have to spawn everything anyway. I'm too lazy to do the, the math and I'm gonna have to do that anyway. So that's Glusty. And that gets us to a 28. So sadly no. God damn it, this has been a really bad run. I've had none of my good cards lately. Because no Weiger, no uh, Kiki Moore uh, Queen. So yeah, let's try that again. So as you might have noticed, I'm not uh, the best Gwent player there is. I've never claimed to be the best in anything like this. But this looks a lot better. God damn it, thank you for that. Um, so Lacerate maybe, but yeah, that's better than... You know what, let's get rid of the warrior for now. There we go. Olsgal is also nice. Okay. Starting with Milva. The, a dangerous, dangerous uh, start to go with. But, Andrega Larva. As usual, get a bit of tribe going on the, on the go. That's just boosted by the amount of elves in her hand. Which is, well, kind of confirmation that it, it, this is not going to be a dwarf stack. Fine by me. Kicking more worker. He's going to keep doing that, which is fine by me. Then we go with the Andrega Queen. Gobble up the worker. Gobble, gobble, gobble. And that just starts making us uh, new drones. Please do so. So that's a bit of a delay because they changed the system a bit where they show you the card that your opponent plays every time. So like that. But of course we can play cards directly. So, that animation that we're seeing might be slower than what's actually happening. So that's of course a lazy Geralt card, which is fine by me. I'm just gonna go with... Hmm. Yeah, let's go with Pugo next. To push back a bit. So now we push back a bit. Uh, which means that if we get a pass, we can just finish this off with uh, Weigern anyway. Um, then we place the Defender over here. Just to avoid getting hit on my Weigern next. So now we're 17 points behind. Um, I could go with Glusty. But Glusty would only get me 7 points. Plus the 2 ticks from the Thrive, which is 9. That gets us up to 34. Which should probably be enough for a pass. But if I go with Weigern, we go to 15 points, which goes to 40. So we still don't get that. So I think I'm just going to add one more drone here. And get the full 8 points with Glusty. Uh, put that over here. That does give us a double 10 there, which is dangerous for a Scorch. But if, it, if there's a Scorch, and at least I pulled it out now, and not later. Because uh, that's not really going to do anything. Wait, what the hell just... Ah, she used Etne as well. Okay, never mind. Um, but now we're 14 points behind. 
which means that I can actually... Um, I'm going to use Manticore Phantom first. Because the reasoning for that is I think there's a Great Oak coming. And with this, I actually take out the targets he can actually generate with that. So now that's reduced to doing only 3 damage if he manages to pull the Oak. And then next turn, I'm going to just push. So we're going to get Purified. No, it's going into range. I would have Purified the Defender status, but apparently not. Uh, so that's 13 points, which we're going to go over like this. So that's one point over, but they still have the Vitality. So if I want to just push that over a little bit, that's that. Give me the Oak, because of course Wygon only has two armor. So if there's a Lacerate or something incoming, then I need to pass anyway. I'm kind of hoping for something like that, something... All enemy units on a row. By one. I like the way you die, human. So that only get, leaves us with one armor, but... Don't have anything useful to consume. So I think I'm just gonna pass. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass. Is the reasoning for that is I have two big cards left in my hands that I want to really save for that final round. Um, aha, Karanti, that's a nice one. And I just would like... I just would like um, either Wispus or just directly now. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. Let's just get the Ice Giant on the field. Yeah. Like this, and then the turn, and pause. So that's what I wanted to have happen. That's a good start. Now I'm going to show you my Kikimore Queen combo. If I would only get... Uh, the, I want the Whispering Hillock, which is basically what I'm looking for. Hideous Feast is always nice. Ah, Whispers. There we go. Um, so that's basically a perfect hand. So now just not fuck it up, I suppose. Um, let's start with... Uh, three drones. Although I could go with only two drones, yeah. Two drones, get Garantir on the field. And copy the Kikimor Queen. So that gives us a, a boost there. Kind of late there, but there we go. That's our first hit. Next up, I need to play Whispers on the range row, which is why I'm trying to kind of bait the route a bit. I kept the one drone as well, just, I mean, I need the space on the range throw. And then the one drone is going to be used for the griffin as well, which is going to trigger another round of tribes as well. Lock a unit and move it to the other row. That's probably going to be the Kikimura oh, Queen, yes. Yeah. That is actually fine. Um... Because now, of course, I'm going to replay Karantir. And uh, with the Whispering Hillock. So I'm going to play the Whispering Hillock. Consume Karantir again. Which is really important. I'm going to get another drone there. Yeah. Then Karantir into the Kikimor Queen. And we get another series of boosts. Now, the problem with this is that I have two units on there that I don't really use now. I'm going to fix that in a minute. So damage two times on the Kikimore Queen, probably gonna destroy it again. Yeah, there we go. Freiheit Officer takes it out. So that's good for, for them. Good for them, but they're six points behind on something that is still going, basically. So a Kikimore Queen now on this row. I'm not gonna trigger any tribe just yet, because of course I don't have the uh, space for it, but I'm gonna end the turn with that. That is, who I feel like their hand isn't all that great. Because that's only eight points. Guess we'll have to see. Um, Adaka Swarm, my last tick over here. And then we can use the Andrega Warrior to get rid of Karantir and Wispus. Uh, which is gonna get us another tribe tick. There we go, and that boosts all the insectoids on the row by one again. 
getting us a lead uh, of what's that? 13 points. We still have Wygern that can be consumed with Ulzrael as well. Griffin is also going to cause another Trivetech. And then, of course, we have the Parasite if we want to take something out. So, four is probably going to be on one of the drones. Or not. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to just tr trigger the Trive again. There we go. Should have killed one of those. I feel like. So now we have two sevens on that row, which is going to be problematic for the... Um, you know, Scorch that's coming. But if I play Ozrael next, I should be able to get rid of that. Um, he's going to move... Oh, that's not good. Let's put that on range. So ranged is my own gra graveyard. Yeah, so ranged... My own graveyard, get Weigern out. So that's 30 points ahead with two cards left to play. I could get Scorched there. He's moving that back, so now of course Scorch can go, yeah. God damn it. Shouldn't have done that. That was smart. Um, so now I can do six damage. Six damage. I'm going to reduce the damage by one only for the Great Oak, which is probably coming. So yeah, I'm going to have lost again. This Great Oak is going to be 12, and she has another tick there. Yeah. Ooh, and even Call of the Forest, so that's... Oh, I hate Squirtel. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. That's not going to... Oh. I won. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Woohoo! Another win for me. Okay, that was unexpected. I thought I was I was sure there was gonna be another great oak there, but there we go. So next up is Nilfgaard. That's gonna be interesting. Because I don't think they'll have much use out of my cards there. They haven't really played their best cards just yet, and that's oh, that is. Okay, that's another Cantarella. God damn it. I knew that was gonna happen. If something like that was going to happen. And there's the... Oh, crap. Well played. <laughs> you leave. Okay, fair enough. That was nice. Um, so either I go for the Weigern there. But I think I should probably pass now since with five, I kind of still have the upper hand. That was a lucky draw. Couldn't really do anything against that. That was really lucky. Could have played Weigern there just to get uh, on top of that. If they won't pass, I could go with Weigern next. Um, Kiki Mark Warrior is pretty high as well. I should probably keep that until later and then Lacerate can go as well. Yeah, okay, Whispering Hillock. Um, and they passed immediately. So I'm not going to risk it and just play Weigern next. Because they already played their uh, dream. Their, what's it called? That one. They had Han Mevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevevev
It's going to be really, really exciting if we can pull that off. Nautica Sergeant, I can take that out in a second, but first I want to start focusing on my combo. So, let's put down two, yeah, two drones. And then play Karantir on the Kikimor Queen. Like that. And then the third. So now the Defender is going to block them from damaging all of those. Even if they play Surrender, the Kikimor Queen will die along with the uh, Arakas drones. But I can still replay Karantir after that. I'm gonna have to be smart about where I put everything here. Because uh, I might fill up my row, but I think I have enough space. So that's a Purify, so that loses the Defender status, which is fine by me. Uh, so now we can play uh, Whispers right next to him. Play the Whispering Hillock on top of Karanti. And then we can play that again on top of the Kikimor Queen. And there we go. So that's a nice setup over there. And I don't think she'll easily break that off. I have a final Kikimor Queen to put there as well. Could technically even get rid of... Yeah, there we go. That's a render. <laughs> that was a bit late, buddy. That was a bit late. And then she's going to play a card from my hand. Oh, yeah, the Manticore Venom. If they get the Manticore Venom, then um, my combo is pretty much over there. And it's a Kikimor Queen. That's not going to help you that much, is it? So now, I could go... I'm going to put down the Kikimor Queen first, so... There we go. And that's a double drive. Ending that turn. Damage an enemy by two, which is fine. I don't think she can kill any of that with it. So this is eight, so I can't really put anything in between there. Uh, nine is fine. Nine is fine. So I can pull that up. Grab those two. And start boosting even more. There we go. And the turn there. And then I think I can just play the Andrega Larva. A move well, made. well, thank you. If I can. Thank you. Offering accepted. So there we have another Assimilate. Don't forget that he's still one card up. If not an illusion. That's going to be a lock. Lock on which one, I suppose? That one. Okay, I don't really have any Purify left, so... Uh, let's put the Andrea Larva over here. So that's going to be a double drive on the next turn. I could have probably played the Manticore Venom first to get rid of Artorias there. Reveal a random unit from your deck. Opponent deck. Do I have anything? I <laughs> have literally five points. That's the only unit still in my deck. There we go. Um, then... Uh, Pugo is supposed to be next, right? So I could, just as a bit of a proportion, put two more drones on the field and then play... That's probably better. I can take out Artorius, the Nolska Sergeant and the Imperial Diviner. So that's that. Then Pugo. Then Osrael and then Parasite if need, or Parasite, Parasite in between there if I need to use it. Okay, Summoning Circle, create and play a bronze unit from any faction. And that's going to be an Andrega Egg. Fine by me. Needs to be able to destroy it to get the most out of it anyway. Then Pugo. There we go, perfect. Couldn't have asked for anything more. That's 77 already, which is really, really nice. And then Osrael is going to go even over that, although I fucked myself on Osrael. Yeah, I forgot about that. I need to put it on ranged if I want to use it properly there. Your attention, please. I shall now speak. 
So I'm wondering what's in his graveyard. The Ice Giant is probably the best. Which puts us up to 8, which doesn't give me another drive round, but anyway. That's that, I suppose. I am gonna... Hmm. I could do Parasite on, for example, the Nausicaa. Hmm, no, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'm gonna hold off on Parasite, because if she has... They have... Uh, what's his name? The, uh, the guy that resets the leader ability. I'm not gonna do that. So I need to put it on the melee row. Which forces me to go with the Ice Giant over there. That gives me a double drive over there. So I still think that's going to be enough. The highest card is 13. So even with the Scorch, it can't really do anything. And even that. If it is Glusty again. That's only three cards that are now at one health. So even Glusty isn't going to save him. And it is the Andrega Warrior. Can take out his uh, two Deathwish units with that. Which is fine by me. So no leader card ability refresh. Wow, Jesus, that was a lot. That was a nice. That was a nice play. You leave. Uh, and then we can take out the spotter. It's gonna be a nice six damage and gives us another uh, drone. So that's thirty-six points ahead. I don't think we'll uh, lose with that. Shoop, stay off. Magic. Magic, I don't think. That takes over a unit. That was a nice one. That's one of the new abilities of Shoop, probably. Well, there we go. Victory. And I think that still gives me my... Please give me my... That's my second part. But I got the Halloween border. There we go. I'm just in time. This is like an hour... Uh, before this actually ends. But the Sauvin border. There we go. There we go. Next one against Squiatel again. I really hate Squiatel. Squiatel is just... It's been the meta for the most better part of the, the last few months now. And it's starting to get really, really annoying. Um, but... Let's not complain about that. I can get rid of Glusty. Glusty is not immediately useful. I think I'm gonna get rid of the Andrega Warrior there. Parasite. Okay. Always start with Andrega Larva. Just a double drive is always an interesting starting point. So the Water of Broccolon, obviously with the two Dryad Fletchlings. It's basically the same old, same old with all those uh, dudes. Let's see. I could consume one of the Larva. And just start spamming those. There we go. And then the turn like that. That's gonna get us uh, drones. A few drones. Drones are always nice. And there's the end turn. That was a bit weird. That's a Mahaka Marauder also on that row. Right, Which means... I should probably just lacerate that entire row. Because that feels like it's being set up for a... Um, a great oak and if I can reduce the amount of units on that row all the better there we go and that gives us another opportunity to use the tactical advantage on the drone I just want to force out his uh, his better cards here because the more cards he spends the less use he'll get out of his leader ability although ah it's mystic echo huh didn't think about that yeah there we go that's even better actually uh, so I don't need to spend Parasite if I don't need to. Unless, of course, there's an Overgrading Justice still in his deck, which is also an option. I could try and push, but... I don't see the use of it just yet. I just want to see if I can't get... my best cards with the redraws here. Glusty Warp is not going to be useful. And Natural Selection sucks as well. Okay, let's just pause. So the best cards are still out there. I still need Karantir if I really want to make a big push. Ah, there's Karantir. That's good. And I think I'm going to just swap out Glusty then. Look, Glusty is powerful in its own right, but I won't have a lot of... I could. I could, technically. But I don't have any attacks otherwise. I could get rid of Glusty. I'm going to get rid of Predatory Dive. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of Predatory Dive. There we go. I could even use 
um, Hideous Feasts instead with Whispers. There we have Mystic Echo, which is good. That's going to be into the Water Broccolon. There we go. That's fine. Is yeah, that is, is fine. Eternal. Aha. Figures Meluzo as a defender. That's good. That is actually good. Because I want to use that for my Parasite. So it gets rid of the defender immediately. Um... Yeah, that seems like the good first part. Just want to see that I end with Glusty. Because if that random damage is going to start kicking in, because we're going to get the barricade dudes that are going to start damaging everything they can. Uh, the Kikimore Queen has two armors, so that's going to help us out a bit with the random destruction that's going to happen. But I do wish I would have kept Lacerate before, so now that's going to turn... Oh no! First of all, Scutenbach. That's a weird decision to make now. Because there's already a Dryad and a Dwarf on the field, so only Elves count after that. Um, I should have placed some more drones first. Yeah, never mind. There we go. Should have placed more drones first. It's gonna, that would have been uh, more targets after that. So I'm going to place three more drones... As a start there. Damn it. it. Was a mistake. So remember that, guys. Don't don't place a Kikimore Queen unless you have uh, drones to back that up. So I have a backup if um Garante gets destroyed. I can use Whispers for something else. Great Oak. That's gonna go onto the Kikimore Queen probably. Okay. But then at least Great Oak is gone. So now we're gonna triple that and then use the Whispers Tribute into the Whispering Hillock onto Karantir. Karantir gets replayed, we get another drone and Karantir gets replayed into the Kikimor Queen and we get that. That was a lot of stuff. That was a lot of stuff. They probably still have Melane. And Melane could get another 4 damage on there. I'm gonna have to deal with that anyway. And then we have a trap card. That is gonna be... I'm pretty sure what that's gonna be. It's either gonna be the Pitfall Trap or a Fireball. Um, I could go with Osrael, but then Osrael is gonna get destroyed by the Pitfall Trap. That's 7 points. The Kikimore Queen is a lot more, of course. Could start with something small just to bait it out. If I now put the Ice Giant on the field. It's not the Pitfall Trap. Okay. It's gonna be... Yeah, I know what it's gonna be. It's gonna be the uh, Crushing Trap. So that's gonna be an entire row worth of damage. Um, which probably means I should have played the Yandrega Warrior instead. I'm going to be able to recover that rather quickly. Move an enemy unit to their other row. That's fine, I think. Oh, that's definitely the crushing trap now. There we go. Okay, that just gets rid of the armor. Could, could do Glusty now, but then it's not going to help, is it? Um, Kiki more Queen again. Because now that does trigger the Thrive. Could place another drone there as well. Um, no, let's just place another Kikimor Queen. And boost those up again. Like that. I'm still quite a bit behind. Damage an enemy unit by two. Probably, yeah, because it's on a melee row. And that kills one of the drones. That's not a problem per se, so I'm going to just spawn another one. And then play the Kikimor Worker in between here. I don't know why this one... Ah, oh, I got boosted before that. Yeah, I should I should remember to put my stronger Kikimor Queens on the left always. So that's going up to that. Then I can play Glusty right next to the... Ice Giants. There we go. Glusty's gonna take 
all of those with him, and that's going to be a double drive. Getting us almost up to the to point total that they are at. I should have played another fucking drone. Never mind. Another three rowdy dwarves. And then I'm assuming we're going to get Sultan at the end there. Could play another drone over here. And then just... What's the highest unit in their deck? So that's now eight. So if I just play Ozreal on the ranged row... I can pull, I think, yeah, Hugo is going to be the highest. And that's that. Not going to go above that, I think. That's 82. So that's where you can see how fast that escalates. And then more Rowdy Dwarves and it can boost all the Rowdy Dwarves by 2. That's a big one, though. But it only gets them to 82, which means that even with, with uh, just this... I'm gonna go to 11, another drive tick, and we get to 94. There we go. We won. That's really weird with that delay now. <laughs> kind of played it a bit weird, but there we go, victory. Whew. So as long as we can get that going, that's actually really nice. And I could have kept last rate for later. Should remember to do that against Coyotel decks. Because um, it is really important. I think we're gonna get two now, yeah. So that means that if we win the next one, that we're actually going to get uh, onto rank 11, and that's what we're here for. And that's... ooh... Novigrad. So the Syndicate against Deekstra, and that's going to be annoying. Because Deekstra, of course, can uh, hit wherever he wants. So that means that I want to keep... This is really good. I want to keep the Defender here. Uh, let's get rid of the Vran Warrior. And Hideous Feast, and there we go. Opponent starts. Hmm. Science is like a river. I could technically just parasite him there. If I just parasite him over there, that's gonna get rid of Kalkstein. Remember, this will be our little secret. Okay, that was a weird oh, so that was the Easter up, so to speak. Okay, okay. Um just put the Andrega eggs right next to this guy. I have plenty of options to start with. Which hunter executioner? Oh, wait for the best pyres. Okay. Uh, which hunter executioners are always annoying because, of course, they can. You know what? If I play Whispers Tribute, I do have the Whispering Hillock already. The only card I'm really missing is Karantir. So if I just use Whispers to play Natural Selection, then Natural Selection is out of my. Or even Hideous Feast. Yeah, Hideous Feast might even be better. Yeah, Hideous Feast. Damage that guy. And boost this guy. There we go. And we get another drone for that for playing another organic card. Suck it. Empty field. With seven coins though, but still, empty field. And that is not his normal ability, so... Play a Syndicate special card from your deck, okay. Interesting. Interesting. So that means that I can actually just outplay him next turn. That's a weird point to just pass. Because now if I pull Karantir, I'm definitely just going for it. Natural Selection, Osrael, all nice cards. So I'm gonna get rid of Natural Selection. That's Pugo. Now maybe one of the Andrega Warriors. If I can get Karantir, that would be nice. No. Okay, Glusty. So I can go first now. He only has three coins left from the seven he started with. Let's go with Defender on the melee row. I didn't even pick any of the larva just yet. They're both still in my deck. Rantir is here. I think I'm just gonna go all out on the high level cards. Because now I can play uh, Ugo. Yeah, Ugo. And then end with Wygurn, and that's going to get us to seven cards. And then I'm just going to stop. So destroy a unit with Bounty, fair enough. And it's going to boost them by that same amount. But that only gets us over there. Let's just play Wygurn now. And that gives us seven armor. And then just pass. So that's going to allow him to damage the Wygurn up until the end there. But also wastes most of his coins and his best cards. 
Um, that's fine. I just wanted to force him into using a, a lot of his better cards there. So let's just pass right into that. Because remember, I still want Karantir. And I can replay Vigern with Osrel, basically, without the risk of losing him. And there we have Karantir. There we have Karantir. Um, ideally, I would also have the Queen. Could get rid of the Ice Giant. The Larva is always nice to start with, because that actually just relays his attention a bit. Maybe get rid of one of the Warriors. Yeah, okay, there's the Queen. There's a queen. I'll have the queen. Spawn two scarabs in this row, so that's... And he actually has the tribute to do so. And that's a defender, so I don't really care about that, because I'm not going to try and destroy your ass. So let's put the Andrega Larva down. And then that. So damage an enemy by three and profit. That's also not that bad. Um, I'm gonna try it, right? Um, let's just add a few of those. And use Karantir to play, as we're used to by now, the Kikimor Queen. And we get a double boost there. Up to 12 already. If we manage to pull off the Whispering Hillock, that would be nice. Otherwise, you might destroy it as well. The Vivaldi Bank. Play the top card for free or play another card for a coin cost equal to its distance. He just gained a lot of coins, so I don't think it will be... Yeah, the, the Doctor. Put a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by three. Don't with Wait, what? Mercy. Ah, ignore the target's armor. Okay. Why did he play two cards? That was a bit weird, but fair enough. I'm just gonna place another Kikimor Queen over here. Trigger Strive again, because remember, he's still not there. Also need to remember that if he plays, I can't even do anything about that. Because I know the combos in, the, in that Syndicate deck. He probably has Savola left as well. A bit of poison, and this guy just boosts itself by two every turn. Ooh, and the Kikimor is getting poisoned. That's just going to be a waste, right? So I'm just going to place a few more drones over here. So I have enough that are boosted. Because I'm losing the Kikimor Queen anyway in a second. So there we go, Kikimor. Work it over there. And a double Trive Tick. Just giving me those points before the Kikimor Queen goes. Because remember, I can actually take those two Scarabs away from him immediately. Destroy all units with one power. So there we go, a second poison as I expected. Then I can grab the Kikimor worker with the queen. And I know I'm gonna get Madame Louisa pretty soon now. Poison a unit! Oh, uh, you can try, buddy. You can try, but I don't really have anything that's way above that, so I'm just gonna consume uh, those guys. I even gonna consume like this. Uh, cause the poison can keep going if you want, but... There we go. Cause that gives me two more drones. No, two more drones, come on. Wh where's that other one? Come on, that was bullshit. And this one needs to tick again. There we go. Damage an enemy by four, tribute six, destroy it instead. Okay, that's gonna give my kick you more warrior anyway. Or that one. Okay. Good, then I can play Glusty. Glusty's gonna take the Scarabs with him. Oh, there we go. Goodbye, Scarabs. I think he got coins for those Scarabs that's getting destroyed. Does that actually... Yeah, that which gained two coins. That's interesting. And there's Madame Louisa. So that the next one is gonna be Zavola. Don't know if I'm gonna be better than that. Um, so Griffin into one of the drones. So that's 10 points ahead, but Zavola is around 20, I think. Because the tribute is free, so he spawns Zavola Frightened, that's 18 points in one go. Oh, I love this job. 
I think I won. I think I won, because now I have Weigern still in the graveyard, so I can play Osrael on the range row and get Weigern in there. There we go. Eat this Syndicate. And that should get us our rank. A bam! A victory completed. And that should get us a GG, of course. And down to 11. There we go. Winning streak done. And we get two reward points for our daily. Because this was a recording over two days. So uh, there we go. And that's it uh, for this laddering then. Because it took me a bit longer than I expected. I think I need to tinker a bit on that Scalager deck still. Because I won only one match with that. And I keep winning with my monster deck. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little insight in how I do things. I'm planning to do this pretty much on a weekly basis. Hopefully getting up a rank every single time. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought of it in the comment section down below. And i uh, see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge Laddering. Goodbye. Yeah,